Hey guys, this is Pops Martin, and in this video I want to show you how you can stream audio from your digital audio workstation, no matter if it's Cubase or any other audio workstation, Reaper, whatever. Um, yeah, it's a little bit tricky for some people, because usually if you stream something, you can only use inputs to stream using OBS, and uh, yeah, it's relatively easy to solve. So, first of all, I don't have any audio sources configured here because OBS comes with basically all options you need to configure audio sources in the profile settings. You go to audio and here you have devices where you can select audio devices or audio inputs, so to say. And there you can see analog in 9 and 10 and ADAT 1 and 2. I will explain you exactly what that is. And that's all I need to stream everything from my workstation. And uh, yeah, let's first of all, let's go to Cubase. And I have just a stupid, simple drum track here. And I will show you. Here's the drum track. And I play it back. And you can hear it already. Let me jump to the mix of you. There you can see the drum track is playing and I switch to OBS and you can see here's the drum track perfectly fine. Let me go back to the mix of you. You can see there is absolutely no inserts, nothing, no plugins for streaming or anything in between. I directly stream from Cubase. How is that possible? All right, so let me first of all stop that drum track because it gets annoying pretty quickly. Um, I should say I'm using an interface which is RME UFX Plus <clears throat> and I will just quickly show it to you. The software, the control software is called Total Mix FX and it's quite overwhelming if you see it for the first time. There's basically all the inputs and there's plenty of them. Then we have the software playback and then we have the hardware outputs. Yeah, And as you can see here, microphone number 9. That's where I'm talking right now, yeah? And uh, as, I, as I told you before, in this uh, OBS settings here, in the audio, you see analog 9 and 10 from the uh, RME UFX Plus is being used for this particular channel, yeah? And if I go here to the settings of this particular channel, advanced audio properties here <clears throat> i can set it to mono because it will always use like twin channels input 9 and 10 and i only use 9 so i just switch it to mono you can adjust basically the input gain as you need and you can also uh, add a sync offset if uh, you're using for example hdmi camera with some uh, a uh, video grabbing device like Elgato or something, then you can kind of set the sync offset so your lip sync is perfectly fine. All right, so that's my microphone coming from the UFX Plus input 9. And then we have the second one, which is basically the ADAT input. But how does that work? Okay, so let's go back to the UFX Plus <coughs> control software. And down here, you see ADAT 1 and 2. And I, in the settings for this particular output, I enable loopback. And loopback is basically like a cable going from the output of ADAT 1 and 2 to the input 1 and 2. And this way, it's like a virtual cable that I enable to use this input for this output. So in this mix here, ADAT 1 and 2 mix, output mix, I just uh, allow the audio from my desktop, from my workstation, to go to this output by the loopback function. It gets routed back to the ADAT 1 and 2 input. And now if we go back here to OBS, and one more time we go to the settings, audio, you see ADAT 1 and 2 inputs I use to stream the audio from my desktop. yeah, And that's not only restricted to um, to the door, it contains everything. So let me switch to this screen, YouTube, 
Yeah, and I play back and you will hear it. It's no problem. Beautiful song, by the way. So I can jump back and forth. Yeah. Can even take down the volume considerably. You still hear it a little bit in the background, and I can play the drums in uh, in Cubase. So yeah, so uh, everything is possible, no problem. And let's go back to YouTube and just stop it for now. All right. Now, huh, would be easy like that. <clears throat> if your audio interface has a loopback function, it should be easy. But there's still something you should uh, take care of. Because some interfaces, for example, I think I remember that Focusrite interfaces have a problem. Um, OBS does not use ASIO. So we are kind of stuck with the WDM drivers, the Windows uh, kind of audio, oh, how do you call that, audio engine or audio driver system. And uh, I go to the RME UFX Plus settings. And here in the settings, I can configure WDM devices that are exposed to the Windows system. So I can select them, I can use them. And if I click on configure, you will see that I just use basically three WDM devices. One is analog in, one and two, forget about that for the streaming, doesn't matter too much, well, no, <laughs> that's the desktop playback. Then analog nine and 10, that's my microphone, so I can handle it basically separately. And then eight at one and two, that's my loopback. So I can access it. Otherwise I could not access it in the WDM world, yeah? and thus I could not access it in OBS. <clears throat> so what you need to do if you don't have a UFX, uh, not a, if you don't have an RME interface, you have to check if you can use the loopback functionality in some way. You can even do it kind of hardwired. Yeah? If you have some extra outputs that you don't use on your interface and you have a couple of inputs that you don't use in your interface, you can actually use two cables to create that loopback. You just have to be careful that you don't create a feedback loop. That would not be nice, <laughs> but it's possible. Most important thing is that you can access these inputs of your interface as WDM devices, that you can configure them to be available in Windows so you can select them inside OBS. That's basically all you need to do. Hmm, okay, so bottom line, this is mostly for RME interfaces, but it's possible to do it with other interfaces as well. Just try it, there's always a way. <laughs> okay, that's it for now. Cheers, have a good day, stay safe, and happy streaming. Bye-bye.